Hi, it's Nathaniel Whiston here and welcome to a brand new series called Sporting Heroes of West Anglia. Today I'm travelling to the village of Great Houghton, it's to the west of Little Houghton, to the north of Preston Deanery and to the southeast of Northampton. It's in South Northampton Shear and it's in West Anglia. series I'm going to be focusing on a different sport each week. I've managed to find a sporting hero for six different sports in West Anglia. So we've got the whole gamut. We've got Olympic gold medalists, we've got world record holders, we've got Hall of Famers. I'm going to shed a light on the sporting, the glorious sporting history of West Anglia. For those of you who've watched my previous series Legends of West Anglia, Writers of West Anglia, or Hollywood Stars of West Anglia, you'll know that I make these videos and they're edited by my friend Jeremy. Well, that partnership has now come to an end. He and his wife Liz have moved to Dubai. They're spending a year out there, they've both got jobs, so they've hot-footed it out of the country and they're living it up over there. And uh, I hope you're enjoying it out there, Jeremy. I'm sure they've got lots of things to do. I know they've got a lot of shopping centres, so that might be of interest to you and Liz. Meanwhile, I'm still here, still in West Anglia, and I'm going to be in charge of editing these now. So not only do I direct, I present, I write, I produce, now I'm editing them as well. And it came as a surprise to me that Jeremy revealed that when it came to editing these videos, he was using Windows Movie Maker. And I thought he had some top of the range, high speed deluxe equipment for these videos. And it turns out he's using Windows Movie Maker. I've got Windows Movie Maker. I could have been editing these all along. Pulled the wool over my eyes there, didn't you, Jeremy? So now I'll be doing all the editing. Jeremy is out of the picture, disappeared and you should start to see a sharp increase in the quality of these videos as a result. Northamptonshire has a sporting history. It's known for its successful rugby team. They also have a football team and I'm sure there's a few other teams knocking around Northampton, Northamptonshire. But the one I'm going to focus on today is the cricket team. Northamptonshire cricket team, also known as North Hants, and I'm going to be talking about one of their famous cricketers, Kirtley Ambrose. Now, if you don't know much about Kirtley Ambrose, he is from the West Indies, but he spent seven years playing in Northamptonshire. He was a bowler, so he came over here and he did some bowling for Northamptonshire, and he was very good at bowling, and he got a lot of people out, which is good for a bowler. And I'm going to the village of Great Houghton today, which is on the outskirts of Northampton, to talk some more about Kirtley Ambrose's life and how he got on here in West Anglia. I'm just stopped in this car park for lunch. I know some of you are interested in food and what people have for lunch. Well, I'm having an egg and crust sandwich and some crisps, monster munch. They haven't endorsed me or anything. I'm just eating them. They haven't paid me to say that. I'm travelling to the village of Great Houghton today and if truth be told I couldn't really find a connection between Kirtley Ambrose and Great Houghton. The reason I'm going there is that it's a village on the edge of Northampton and it's entirely possible that he's been there or he lived there maybe, I don't know. There is a cricket ground there so it's possible he went and practiced there, had a knockabout. Yeah, um, I did try to find out where he lived while he was here and I was researching, I was flicking through his autobiography, Time to Talk, in, in Waterstones and there was no mention of it. There was a lot of mentions of his house in Antigua, so if anyone out there wants to make a series called Sporting Heroes of the West Indies then speak to me because I can point you in the right direction. But Northamptonshire, he was scant on the details, so I'm going to go there and 
hopefully find a connection. At least, if he didn't go there or live there, then we can confidently say that he must have driven past at some point. And, well, that's something, isn't it? I should say that, personally, I don't know much about sport and I'm not really that interested in it. The reason I'm doing this is, as the self-appointed cultural ambassador of West Anglia, I know that sport has some cultural significance to quite a lot of people, so I should be making some videos about sport in West Anglia, even if I'm not the most knowledgeable person to be talking about it. But maybe that's a good thing, maybe, maybe it will help to have a novice guiding you through and maybe you know more about sport than me or maybe you know less and either way you might get something valuable from these videos and you might learn something about sport and or West Anglia. So let's just see how it goes. Okay. And we're here. We're in Great Houghton. Some nice houses here, I think. Ambrose could have afforded one of these. I don't think he was living in a bed sit in Northampton. He did complain he didn't get much money while he was at Northampton, but I'm pretty sure his, his wage bracket would have meant he could have afforded a house in a village like Great Houghton. I think that Kirtley Ambrose, or Sir Kirtley Ambrose, as I should call him if I'm being formal, lived here. It's possible. He was famous for his reticence to speak to journalists. He was synonymous with a quote. He said, curtly talks to no one. And from that point on, people knew that there was no point trying to have a conversation with him after a match. So for a man looking for peace and quiet and a place where he wouldn't be bothered, then I think Great Horse in here in West Anglia would be the perfect place. Look how quiet it is today. I'm sure Kirtley would have loved walking in this countryside beside me. As an athlete, he'd have to keep in peak condition. So a walk in a place like this would be perfect just to get your, your health on track. He came from Antigua and Barbuda and spent seven years here in Northamptonshire, arriving in around 88, 89 and staying till 1996. At the same time, he was still playing for the West Indies and the Leeward Islands, so I'm not quite sure how that works out with cricket. He was playing for three clubs at the same time. Must have been a hell of a commute for him. I've done some research on Kirtley Ambrose, so I may as well share it with you now. He was six foot seven, so it meant that when he bowled the ball, it used to bounce up really high. He was good at Yorkers. He formed a formidable partnership with Courtney Walsh and they were the linchpin of the bowling part of the West Indies team in the 1990s. In 1992, Wisden, the, the yellow cricket book, said he was one of the best cricketers of the year. In 93, he got seven for naught against Australia. And in 1994, he helped bowl England all out for 46. And he personally took six for 24. He didn't have much swing, but he had pace, movement and accuracy and that more than made up for it. Now, I don't know what a lot of that means, but hopefully you've learned something from that. Ambrose and Walsh had a very effective partnership bowling for the West Indies. However, the team began to rely on them. They had less bowlers to support them because they knew that Ambrose and Walsh would do all the work. It's something I can sympathise with. At work, there's this report that there's three of us and one of us has to do it each month. But inevitably, I end up doing it. They always say, oh, Nathaniel, you're really good at Excel. You can do it. But it's not fun. I don't like doing it. I can just do it well because I've took the time to learn it. The other guys I work with, they're not bothered. And I guess that's just like all the other West Indian bowlers at the time. They just thought, oh, Ambrose and Walsh will do it. They do a good job. We'll let them do it. Well, it's not fair, is it? Rarely in Northamptonshire's history have the performances and personality of one cricketer dominated the season to the extent that Kirtley Ambrose did in 1994. Those were the words of a Wisden journalist, Wisden being the cricketing book, 
magazine, whatever it is, I'm not sure, but they really know their stuff about cricket. That was their opinion of Kirtley Ambrose in 1994, which was ultimately his peak here in Northamptonshire and West Anglia. This season got off to a really bad start for him though. He turned up late, about four days, said he missed his flight and they fined him heavily for it. But it just goes to show it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And I want you all to bear that in mind as you watch this, the first episode of the series. If you don't like it, then stick around because by the sixth it could be really, really good. As a youth, Curtly Ambrose was more interested in basketball, and at six foot seven, who could blame him? However, West Anglia doesn't really have any basketball teams. Nearest one, I think, is Leicester or London, maybe. Either way, it's not West Anglia. And to anyone watching who may harbour dreams of being a professional basketball player, I say to you now, you're best going to America or somewhere else where they really like it because around here it's not that popular. These are nets, look. You can see people would, or the bowlers would bowl up this green bit here and the batsmen would reply. So this is a very clear clue to me that Kirtley Ambrose possibly lived in Great Houghton because he's got somewhere to practice right here. The batsmen, when they're practicing, they would stand here in these nets and up there there would be Ambrose his imposing frame tunneling down and he would chuck a ball really fast maybe a hundred miles an hour and they'd lob it at us and we'd have to bat it back it took a lot of bravery from those batsmen to face a ball from Sir Kirtley Ambrose well he became a sir once he retired so he was just Kirtley Ambrose at the time when he played but you get my meaning I'm just taking this opportunity to sit down on this park bench here and enjoy the sun and I'm looking out across this field and it's taking me back to my school days. Those Monday mornings, nine o'clock, shivering in t-shirt and shorts on a wet, muddy, cold football pitch or rugby pitch depending on the time of year, while on the touchline a PE teacher wearing about four layers including a thick fleece jumper, bellows instructions. That might help explain why I don't like sport that much. Some of you are probably wondering, Nathaniel you're making a series called Sporting Heroes of West Anglia and you've decided to do one about somebody from the West Indies, Antigua and Barbuda thousands of miles away. Kirtley Ambrose was a brilliant bowler. He could have gone anywhere in the world, well anywhere that plays cricket, but that's still Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, India, Pakistan etc. But he decided to come to England and more specifically he decided to come to West Anglia. We should be proud of that. This man with all this talent and all this skill and he decides to share it with us, to join us here in West Anglia. So for me, he absolutely is a West Anglian sporting hero. What a terrific start to the series and what terrific weather we've had today. I've had a great time walking around Great Houghton and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learning about Kirtley Ambrose and seeing some fine West Anglian scenery again. I know the next time the cricket comes on television, I'm not going to change channels immediately like I always do. I'm going to linger on it for a little bit because I feel I've got a newfound appreciation for the sport. A slight newfound appreciation for the sport. That's it for today. I've been Nathaniel Whiston and I hope you will join me again next time for another episode of Sporting Heroes of West Anglia. Goodbye.